Do you like big guns? Because if you do, this video is for you. Because this is the biggest gun in the world. We are at Fort Rinella, just east of Valletta. Oh, where they have a surviving Guthrie Bridge. It's like a drawbridge, but it, it rolls in rather than flips up. Anyway, it's uh, today run as a museum by a team of impressively committed reenactors, and we'll be seeing more from them in other videos. Twelve of these huge guns were built, eight were sold to the Italian Navy, which is largely why the British then installed two to defend Valletta, and another two for Gibraltar. The figures are just mind-melting. This thing fired a one-ton shell, uh, not admittedly a 100-ton shell, which is what my guidebook says, but no, a one-ton shell, eight miles, which was as far away as the horizon. When it arrived there, it still had quite a flat trajectory, so presumably this thing had a range that could have just fired virtually into space, but its effective range was as far as it could see, which was eight miles. and it had something like a 98% hit rate. So, in other words, if you were an enemy ship um, and this saw you and got angry, you would have to get to terms with not being an enemy ship for very much longer. And in fact, it didn't even have to hit you, because though this would flatten pretty much any ship, uh, cripple it instantly, then sink it uh, that it hit, uh, it wouldn't actually even have to hit you. A near miss from this thing would put one tonne of explosive into the water, and the underwater concussion would be enough to rupture the hull of most ships. It was never fired in anger, however, which means that it was a success, because this is like the Victorian nuclear deterrent of its day. You don't mess with the Victorian Britons, and nobody did. They test fired it uh, four times a year, which was quite expensive. Quite expensive. Each shell cost the equivalent of a soldier's wages for over seven years. Lost it? Right, that's coming out of your wages. Oh, so. And they had to send out riders in all directions to tell the local Maltese to open their glass windows, because if they didn't, they'd all be shattered. The shifting lobby. The garrison was small. This was made possible by the fact that the gun was moved and loaded with the aid of a modern steam-powered hydraulic loading system. In fact, there were two, each operating alternately either side of the gun for a faster rate of fire. Let's hear Antoine tell us about it. As soon as we are fired, we will move the 100 ton gun backwards, rotate those 142 to 90 degrees, lower the 100 ton barrel to bring its muzzle on front of the little holes we see on top of those black cylinders. From there, we will inject some pressurized water to raise the barrel, then elevate the 100 ton gun, rotate those 142 to 90 degrees, till the 100 ton barrel to get rid of the excess of water, elevate the 100 ton gun, rotate those 142 to 90 degrees, lower the 100 ton, load one ton of explosive and, <laughs> and 200 kilograms of black powder, elevate 101 ton, rotate 143 ton, move 100 ton forward, and then fire. All within six minutes. Is everything all right down there? I'm a bit tangled up in chains. Uh, the enemy, meanwhile, would have guns that fired at the most perhaps two miles, so this thing could engage them long before they could do anything in retaliation. There was a hand-pumped backup system. With 40 men working it, they could just manage one shot every 15 minutes. This shell is farcically enormous. Conditions for the men seem to have been pretty good. They were well fed and washed three times a day. Here we see them fetching in imported coal for the boiler. They seem happy enough. They again could be fired electrically, but they never trust electrically, um, electricity as such. Why? Because already in those days they realised that if you press the button and nothing happens, the soldiers in charge would spend more time insulting his colleague and God than actually fixing the problem. Therefore it was much more efficient to ask one of your soldiers to climb onto the carriage, fix a pre-charge, a primer in that polygonal shape over there, pass it through the loophole, and then proudly stand in front of that little concrete recess. And when the order of fire is given, simply pull that lanyard and hide as much as he could <laughs> from the glass in this little makeshift of protection. When in the rooms with the munitions, the men had special metal-free uniforms to avoid causing sparks.
the biggest gun in the world. Lindy Bear!